Yeah. Oh, Patrick. Patrick? Nice to meet you. Stan. Stan? Yeah. Good to meet you all. Keep going. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you're doing a This is one of our great sponsors and the infamous Richard Waymeyer. Thanks you guys for, for sponsoring. One of our great sponsors. Our sponsors, thanks for being here, appreciate it. I was just looking at your uh, your uh, your badge ribbons here. This is cool, Dorn. Maybe, maybe can, can, can I? So, um, we have a number of tools for the database. So we have a developer tool, Toad, which will help with TC policies. Uh, uh, we do Spotlight and Poglight, which are our premier monitoring products. These are our friends from Talavant, all the way from Madison, Wisconsin. Because I'm drunk and drinking so much water. <laughs> all right, so tell us very quickly about Talavant. We are a digital intelligence consulting firm. We help companies with data strategy, data architecture, and implementation. And more specifically, we focus our services around the Microsoft BI platform. Fantastic. She's good. <laughs> I can see why you hired her. <laughs> hey, yeah. Jason, how are right. you? I'm doing All right. great, Paul. How are you? Uh, fantastic. That's awesome. Nice hat. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. My, it's my, my, uh, my speaker hat, my beret with the it's little, a raspberry little beret. pen. It is a raspberry beret. It's I'm hard glad to find that... it in a second hand store. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's warm, I still wear it a lot more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so uh, tell us about a tunix. So, uh, Tunix is a, a consulting practice. Uh, we're a Microsoft partner. Uh, we do uh, advanced analytics, so we do a lot of uh, data science and visualization. And we have consultants all over the country. And right. uh, we do a lot of good things for people. Okay, <laughs> cool. But you're a longtime friend of the community, and you're based in Denver. I right? am. I'm based yep. in Littleton, Colorado. Yep. And hey, Wearscape people. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for sponsoring, first of all. So, these are, these are our friends from Wearscape. All right. So tell us very quickly about Wearscape. Uh, Wearscape, we're a data warehouse automation tool. So we automate all the way from the ETL to the data visualization. Yeah. All right, well known, good stuff. Yeah, a lot well of people say good things stuff. about Wearscape. <laughs> Wearscape Rad. Yeah, all right, Red, fantastic. Data ball. And you're, uh, you're giving out sunglasses. Yeah. All right, good morning. Good boy, sunglasses seem to be the theme yeah, we today. we got some nerd sunglasses. Yeah, so. those are awesome. All right, well, I'll, I'll, pick, I'll pick up a pair. So tell us why you're why you're here at uh, Oregon SQL Saturday sponsoring. Well, SQL Server runs on Windows and or Linux, and yeah. uh, all that can run on Dell. So we've got of course. solutions for to back up, accelerate, you know, replicate SQL. So we've got lots of solutions for SQL. Okay. And uh, Dell has been a longtime sponsor of Pass Events oh, for yeah. many, many, many years. Yeah, we'll be up there next week, at, uh, this coming up week in uh, Seattle. Fantastic. We really appreciate it. Okay, here's our friends from Idira. And uh, very well-known uh, SQL Server tool. Set. So uh, tell us real quickly about Idira Tools. So Idira has all the tools from development to management to help the DBA get all their ducks in a row. All their ducks. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> you know what? I use I use your your ducks. I've always used your ducks to park my car. So I, I always hang an Idira duck from the ceiling in my uh, in my go. garage so that you know it hits the windshield and I know that I've parked. <laughs> Are you hanging it by the neck? Uh, you know, I I have, uh -huh. but not currently. No, I actually drilled a hole in its back. Well, thank you so much for sponsoring.
custom advisory conditions to capture that information. So I know you definitely can. I have to go do a little bit of work for you, but I can definitely find that information. Right. So drop me an email or drop me a DM about that as a reminder, just so that everyone can be as All right, this is Andy Yoon from uh, Century One, who's uh, one of our great sponsors here. <laughs> All right, Andy, tell us real quickly about Century One and why you're here. Oh, wow. So Century One, we do all sorts of stuff as far as uh, uh, giving you solutions to the Microsoft data platform. Uh, so we're most well known for monitoring your SQL Server environments, but with our recent acquisition of Pragma Networks software, uh, we now offer you uh, solutions for the entire uh, um, workflow of uh, of software development, or the entire life cycle, I should say. So, development, QA, testing, all sorts of different stuff. So, okay, and you're a sponsor here today at Oregon sure SQL, yes. and you have you you win the the, the prize for having the, the largest raffle uh, <laughs> item, or at least the largest box, and it looks impressive. Yes. What are you what are you raffling off today? So we have a Millennium Falcon uh, drone today. So uh -oh. something kind of cool, a little bit nice. different, and uh, hopefully I catch it. So. Okay. All right, and this is Derek, he can do math. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, so now you have a camera that does it. The camera also has an accelerometer in there. And this is a model to see what the model Hamish, he's, he's you know, studiously uh, prepping his presentation. <laughs> his little desk here that remind you of grade school. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> right. I fit in a lot better when I was younger. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that's true of, of all of us. Help yourself. There's a, there are pins as well. Yeah. All right. Is the French version of uh, SQL Saturday Oregon? Yes, it is. Right. <laughs> well, only if you're here, you have to say Oregon. Oh, excuse me, Oregon. Oregon. So I said that my wife was from California. Corrected me. Well, that's because she's from California. Uh, so you say Oregon. <laughs> Gun. Gun. Yeah. I mean, Gun. everybody else. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah. Right. Everybody who's not here, and that's how we know that you're not from here. <laughs> I could have pulled it off, but she corrected me. <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, uh, God, I, should, yes. I should video Oregon. you saying that so that I can. Integer versus opinion. I guess compatible. Compatible. The precedence is, yeah, different. But at the same yeah. time, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, union and a tax. That's interesting. Yeah, because this is like management. Decision making. Okay. And um, again, I mentioned the uh, extract, transform, and load. So knowing how to do things like uh, coding in Python would definitely be considered uh, advantageous. Um, again, good uh, salaries here in the Portland um, area. Um, again, if you were interested in being a data analyst, uh, these would be some sessions that I would recommend going to today that have a little bit more of an impact. So, um, I've got a database, and so I've got two databases. Here, there's Trendlog demo batch and Trendlog demo single, and they contain a table. And I am going to run deletes from both of them. And in one case, I am going to batch those deletes. So I am grabbing a max or a min date, so the smallest date in my table, and then I'm grabbing a max date. So 
though, and these are being explicitly coded, begin transaction, commit transaction. At the same time, or in a different said, my opinion, it's not Microsoft's opinion, okay? Um, so take it what what you're worth. What's the right. performance overhead for all these encrypted versus farm level encryption? Do you notice the difference? The real difference is this, okay? So what you're doing with, when, when you're talking about the encryption and decryption process, you're actually moving the CPU usage off your SQL server onto your Weber app server. Because remember, it's all happening through the .NET layer. So you're actually moving, the, all you're doing is picking up and now you're, all your performance is now gonna be on your web app server. And you come to take my photo. I'm doing a presentation with all of these people. Here. Yes, I, I'm doing candid recordings. Candid recordings are <laughs> amazing. I did that in, in Poland. A video crew coming in, and they would come up to the speaker like this whilst they were talking. So as he walked in from the back of the room, I just walked towards him. <laughs> <laughs> and kept walking towards him, and then walked around him. And he had absolutely no idea what to do. We don't need to. It's embedded in here. All of these good podcasts. Um, and examples. How do we use it? So this is where you're going to start. Here we go. It tests all the link servers for a SQL Server instance, SQL 2016, and output results to the file. That sounds like something I might want to do. You don't even need to think about it. This is how easy it is for you to get started. And what I did is I felt overwhelmed. I had all of these slides. I couldn't figure out how to group them, how to organize them, how to sort them. And I just said, I just need to go for a walk. So I, I got dressed, I stepped out, and I walked around my neighborhood for an hour. And for an entire hour, I was pacing like this. And I was like, okay, how do I do this? OK, I have all of these different topics. What's the main thing? What's my main storyline? What's my key point that I want to share here? And that's where I came up with this idea. OK, well, this is, this is a performance. You can kind of think of it as a movie theater or something like that. What are the important things? All right, we have, well, we have you know, the things that you do, so things like body language and voice. OK, we can group that into person. And then we have the slide deck and demos. Well, all right. One of the ways we can do that is we can actually use our R script as a, a data source for our Power BI report. So we can connect directly to that script, bring in that data, and to embed it into our report. We can use the, the R script as uh, in the Power Query editor as a transformation step and applied step. And does everyone here use Power BI regularly or has used it before? No? Okay. Oh, this, well, yes, this side of the room, yeah. Plus and minus that you have to think about when you're uh, doing. Uh, these type of uh, evaluations of which, where do you put all of the logic, you know, as always. Anybody else have any questions about using DAX or Power Query? I, I do both. I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll be honest, it's kind of, you do have to make that determination. Am I going to, you know, I did include some links uh, down below there uh, that you can actually uh, get the references for both Power Query and for DAX uh, to take a look at it. and. Maybe there's a specific function that only works in DAX and doesn't work in Power Query. So that's the other thing. And you have to store a social security number. How many digits is a social security number? Nine. Nine. Is it ever eight? Is it ever ten? Nope. Nine. It's always nine. So that is a good candidate for a chart, for a fixed length. What about a phone number? Would you store that as fixed length or variable length? Extension. See, it depends. The answer is it depends. That comes to knowing your data. What if you're storing international phone numbers? Same length. You definitely don't want to use fixed length. You want to use variable length or something like that. Specify times, and I've said this before, when you want to maintain your database. Yeah? This, is, this is important. You have to give your time because you have to rebuild indexes, you have to make changes, you have to roll out new words, you have to patch the systems. Yeah? Uh, security doesn't get better. Operating system has bugs all the time.
in the United States, we're still figuring this out. But if you're leading a company, no. To be better at changing things, the improvements that DevOps brings and the ability to quickly change things, to quickly adapt to increase regu uh, regulation, to quickly uh, respond to data breaches, it's going to be very attractive. From a manager lens, what do you care about? You care about your team's performance. Important. You really don't want your team. This diagram is from. Uh, it's simplified down from a much larger diagram. I'm a huge fan of this book. The book is called Accelerate. The book is by Dr. Nicole Forsgren, Jez Humble, and Gene Kim. They are. The and we can see now how far has it come. Well, about halfway. So it's not very fast. Let's see if we can find out why it's, it's, what is slow. And I got a stop procedure here that is not coming with this server. I will talk about where it comes from later on. And I will use that 53 is a spin for from uh, the order, the customer need, the freight, to the, the, the current discount. And then he uh, gets the data about the customer. He has to come to the city. And then he goes on determining the discount. So he's looking at the discount table of the customer. Anyway, these are the two statements. Um, these are the two statements that are taken most of the time. And those are the excesses to the temp team. So, and why are these taking a lot of time? Well, first of all, we can see that each loop has completed. SQL is so-called fourth generation language, which has a completely different paradigm. In SQL, you describe the requested end result. So instead of Growing through the morning ritual like I just did, this is more like my boss sending me an email, be in the office at 9 tomorrow, oh, and we have a, a, a customer meeting, so wear pants. Face with an important customer. And he cares that I'm at the office in time. So with databases, you write, you describe the end result. We are still dealing with collections. The collection is now called a set. And in SQL, the result is described by applying something. So um, you've got a long, a pretty much long development cycle. And the red dots represent um, some sort of release that's happened. So there's quite a lot of uh, code been written, quite a lot of uh, functionality been developed. And then all of a sudden, we're going to do one massive release. We're going to raise the bar by 30 quality steps. So if we've got a straight line, yeah, all good. We deployed to production pretty much as we wanted to do. But then, here something's gone slightly wrong. We've, um, we've had to um, roll back a little bit. And it's quite hard to roll back just some of your changes. Um, it's, it's much easier to probably roll back all of them. But if you're doing this in a live environment, obviously that's got its, its own challenges. Stuff that's second nature in all of you, I have no idea of that. So that's always an opportunity for everyone to learn. So if you thought about speaking, I was going to ask you what you think it takes. But to me, honestly, it's just, just got to step up here. It's, it's about, what, 10 steps, 15 steps from your chair. That's really all it takes. Uh, a laptop helps, but you can come up and you can do a presentation without a laptop. You can, uh, if you have markers, you can do something with a whiteboard. You can do shadow puppets. You can do semaphore. You can do all kinds of craziness and all that. It's really, it is easier than you think it is. And the topic doesn't necessarily even have to be technical, it could be... Alright, so my name is Marcelo. I'm not from around here, that's, uh, that's pretty obvious at this point. I'm a database consultant at uh, the PTM Group, which is a Canadian company. Um, I, currently, uh, I, I'm, I currently manage a SQL Server, SQL Server user group, a PES user group, down in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm an occasional blogger dbbits.com, it's very, it's, it's there, the, the URL. Uh, I own a couple of, uh, couple of certificates, a couple of Microsoft certificates. I also own uh, an Oracle certificate. I, I, already, I already got one database here. It's already synchronized, it's already, it's already there. It's the primary. All right. Um, it is, it says containers are awesome. That's what it says in that particular file, <coughs> which is true. So, from within the container, I'm able to reference volumes that are outside the container, and I'm showing you the results of my cat command. Yeah? This is one way to do it. Let's 
see. Now I'm going to run SQL command, still in the bash shell, in that mounted volume. So I had made that backup already, obviously. And it's just sitting there on that volume that I've now mapped into the container. <laughs> let's, let's do the wave. We'll start over here. Ready? Ready? Go. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. You guys are terrific. <laughs> oh my goodness. Down here, we're pulling back our databases into three different uh, array variables. And then we're going to use those to check where our scripts are going to go further down the script. Question. Yes. Why scroll back up to the I that In this particular case, that probably doesn't need to be there. Um, there are some instances where you have code that's or value that's returned, and the default value, if, unless you specifically tell uh, invoke SQL command to go beyond that, it will cut it off. So, like I said, virtually unlimited, right? Um, you do pay for what you use. So, as I need more, I can get more. I pay for more. Um, but one of the other nice things is, in all, most cases, it's almost instantly or near instantly available. I mean, even if you're doing IaaS, right? You say, oh, I need more storage, I add it into my VM. Yeah, sometimes you gotta reboot the VM, especially if it's a Windows machine, because Windows machines require reboots for just about everything. Um, unlike the Linux world, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but for the most part, instantly available, right? So you have a lot of less limitations there compared to because we already have the, the entire data set in our Power BI report, that's what we built the rest of our visuals off of. We don't actually need all of these um, different columns. We only really need the ID to join. We're okay now, after I've updated this, I've saved it. I have to go copy paste that code, recopy it into Power BI, then I have to change all of the manipulation steps. One thing we can do as well, and this is actually a cool tip that I picked up at the uh, Business Application Summit in Seattle in November, or in July rather. Is anyone there at that uh, conference? Awesome. Um, yeah, so in one of their sessions, they introduced this cool little trick. If we use just the source function in R, and we use the connection string to our R file, if I hit OK. So you go and pick, I had dragged these six elements, remember I had dragged these six elements on here, and I just drag them on as placeholders. I wouldn't normally position them like this. And then you go and connect up the data, and uh, it's really, really easy. I, I mentioned earlier that Report Builder is, was originally designed and really well suited for the power user, the Office, the Excel guru. Um, this tool is just a step above that in that it could be really easy for a uh, junior or non-developer to get started on doing some stuff like this because you would still write a sort of procedure. The tools, so at the end, whether it's a SQL Server data tools publish, report builder publish, or mobile reports publisher, they all publish to the report server. In SQL Server data tools, it's a right click. I publish, uh, one of my customers is in the cloud. I right click deploy, and it goes up to Azure. And you can detect errors quickly and fix them more easily. Here's the picture. So what we have, we have Brandon. Brandon writes some code, commits it up to source control. Then we have Hamish. He does the same thing. But of course, we do some testing and stuff, and we get a failure, and Hamish's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I uh, didn't use Richard regular expressions. Um, so the cool thing is, I get immediate feedback. I remediate, we test again, woohoo! I can now package and deploy my database code. The continuous integration isn't the whole story, because here's what happens out in the real world. I do some unit testing, we do some build testing, we do human testing. <laughs> But then we back up. <laughs> so we've got, we have to do wasteful rework. We did some great stuff here. Over here, it's not so good. Introducing a better way. Continuous delivery, number four. So, we do unit testing. We do our builds. We deploy out to a little build system and we get immediate feedback. Cool. 
That's continuous integration like we did before. That's right. Is that where you went last year? Ah, two years ago. This is a Hamish Watson. Did I? <laughs> this is a Warwick Wright. And young. Neither of them have managed instances. <laughs> My name's John. I'm presenting the session on introduction to managed instances down in Oregon, see what's happening. If you want to know what they are, how to use them, how to get your data into them, come and check out my session. Cool. See you soon. Try this way, beautiful. Right. <laughs> That's the new central one office I'm in as well. Oh, I was right. wondering where that was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. That is the new office. Were they drinking the Kool Aid? Sorry? Drinking the Kool Aid then? Someone has been, although we have got four beer taps at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough to no, 12, no, no Kool Aid needed. <laughs> we got, um, so, there's, within, where the office is now, within one block, we've got five breweries, two distilleries, cider house, um, and uh, there's sort of like a bowling alley microbrewery place as well. This is why nobody ever answered when we call. It's like, oh, the system's down. We'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and sometimes that's not viable, okay? Managed instances being brought online to help address many of these issues, to really help us with that, okay, I can't re-engineer everything, I need SQL Server instance, but I don't want the overhead of having to do all the patching, all the management, everything like that. Okay, platform as a service, basically you just you deploy the managed instance, we connect to it, Microsoft do all the backups, Microsoft do all the provision, they do the operating system, all the patching, they take a lot of the operating then they're mutually exclusive. And we can denote that in our little Venn diagram like that. We can notate this by saying A union B equals C. So that means that if we take all of the elements of A and union those elements with B, we get the, the parent set of C. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it is the universal set, but it's certainly another set. So A and B could be subsets of C. C could still be a subset of something else. We also have meetings once a month. On the second Wednesday of every month, they are totally open meetings. Anybody is invited. You don't have to reserve, although it's really nice because, among other things, we supply some free food and we like to know how much you can go. What? Somebody said something? That's good. That's good. So, if you're interested in learning more, it's free, totally free, even the free food that we supply. Um, It's really nice. It's really nice. So I haven't started yet. I got. Oh, I can start now. So it's really important that the attorneys be able to save their time that they spend. You know, they could be in the shower. They're going to have. They're going to build that. You know, they're going to build that crazy. But you got to have some software to. I'm not kidding. It's real. I know that. And they work 24 hours a day too. Um, yeah, <laughs> SQL Agent is not available to us. It took a little bit of time and it's still broken. When it first came in, what it allowed us to do was to see the agent jobs that we've got, we could see the history of those agent jobs. We couldn't do anything else. That's been improved and if I Coming to see that I can actually run a job. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the things that make this terrible and how we can move forward. Yes. Are your slides going to be uh, on the on site? Uh, yes, they will. Sorry, I haven't uploaded them yet, but I will. They they will be there. Um, unfortunately, my slides don't have lots of notes or things like that, so it's best that you actually have to talk and pay attention because otherwise the slides might make not might not make any sense at all. But let's see how we go. Okay. So as you can see, the price of one eater right now is $196 with the seven points, right? And so this is Easy Edge. This is not Ethereum. Ethereum is a platform that allows anything, the off-chain governance plus 20% of that on-chain governance. Milliseconds for CPU, 2.2 seconds. Elapsed time, and I like to look at elapsed time because if you think about it, at the end of the day, I'm waiting for that query. And it's not 500 milliseconds for me, it's 2.2 seconds. And maybe more, depending on what the application is doing. Okay, so. Also, having a pure extension. C 
See, it depends. The answer is it depends. That comes to knowing your data. What if you're storing international phone numbers? You definitely don't want to use fixed length. You want to use variable length. Specify times, and I've said this before, when you want to maintain your database. Yeah? This, is, this is important. You have to give your time because you have to rebuild indexes, you have to make changes, you have to roll out new words, you have to patch the systems. Yeah? Uh, security doesn't get better. Operating system have bugs all the time. There's going to be hardware upgrades. You want to buy it. You, make, you want to make it better. You need to reserve time, and the SLA is the place where you do that. Yeah. This is this is my favorite part of this. As I mentioned on that, my previous employer, first day or first week, got there and they said, ah, oh, just change this ID number. So in South Africa, we have our identification number of 13 digits, and throughout the years, there's certain requirements that change in our ID numbers that were um, restricting us to not specify race inside of the ID number. So what happens is uh, uh, people will call in and say, okay, I've got my new ID number, can you change it on the system for me? Go and you change it and by accident forget to select your way clause. That 16 second window we had where it was active, then the new record came active, and it's valid all the way into the far, far future. Yeah, we see that we had a change, but if we look at the actual data in those rows, yeah, no difference at all. So we still get that extra row that we didn't really put. If we do a delete, the record's no longer in the main table. But we do have the record in the history table that we just deleted a second ago. No, I just, I I just write that one. <laughs> I just write that one. Monthly, and then you'll have a, a team member who'll go, no, 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 I want, and then you'll have transactions. Sorry, you get the idea. Yeah. Transactions daily, year. Um, you mean they make sense, the names? Well, do you, but I'll, if someone on the team will go, no, 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 I want all the daily ones grouped together. Yeah, so it's the daily, daily. Right, daily trans, daily sales. And so you're going to have a lively conversation on which one's better. What about column name equals right. versus as column name? That's uh, a hot topic as, 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 as. Now here's, here's, here's yeah. a beautiful thing, is if you use something like Redgate SQL Prompt, you can go in and you can have your, you want equals, I want as, you want commas before, before versus after. Then you can do that, and you can you can do your control Z, and you can format it, and you can write all your code. Yeah. But then before you check it in, you go into SQL Prompt and you change it to the company convention, yeah. because again, if you check it in that way, and then I try and do a diff on source control, it's useless. So then you can go and use Prompt to the company standard before you check it in. You go check it out. You go. I, I do it all the time. I go pull some code, someone before me wrote, and the first thing I do. Patients, remember that it's just a conversation. Try to listen and make sure you're eliciting information from the other party, right, to test those assumptions. Reframe things. Uh, again, putting you know, yourself into their shoes. Perspective taking. You know, what does it look like to them, right? How do I help solve their problem? Whoever helps solve the problem for the other person is the one who gets the most value. Um, in the relationships phase, don't blame the person. Don't confuse the problem with the person. I was the almost best person. And I work for Design Mind. Design Mind is a uh, San Francisco-based company. They are all about data, big data, with many uh, technology partners over there. My niche in the company is Azure and BI and Power BI and everything uh, data related in, in Azure. Those are some contact information there. I'm LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, don't tweet much. Facebook's more for personal stuff, but they put it in, a, in, the, in the template of this slide, so it's there. All right. So back in March, uh, I was, I made to the Microsoft Build conference. You know, build conference, the one for developers, right? And Scott Guthrie was uh, delivering the, the, his keynote. And at some point in the keynote, after presenting a bunch of other things, he showed this particular slide in here. 
And he mentioned, I, when I look at this, a lot of say, okay, SQL DB, I'm in, PostgreSQL, I'm in, my, uh, my SQL, I'm in, Redis Cache, I'm in, Cosmos DB, I'm in. But as I look at this slide and I listen to him, I was like, whoa, things have changed so fast and, uh, you know, so subtly that I your job, <laughs> the quality of your work, the quality of your career. I don't like spending hours, days, weeks in Excel. We broke it, then they imported it into how many of you have a table in your database called sheet one dollar sign? And when you install it, you will get a base environment. Never work off the base environment. Leave it alone, don't touch it, create a new environment and work in that. And as you do different projects, you'll see where, hey, as I go to this project, I should probably create a new environment that has just the packages I need and work in those packages. And then when new versions of those packages come out in that project, don't just update them in that environment, because it might break stuff. Create a new environment, install those new updates, port your code over that, and make sure it all works, and you're all good. And then you can delete the old environment once you know that it all works. And I'm going to show you in a second how to create those environments. On the IT side, it's a little different, because we want make, maybe we want to make sure our QA environment has the same value as our prod environment. So we can use the system to actually make sure that what QA sees is actually what's in prod. And again, it'll go through the actual results and the reconciliation process, and then finally the reporting. So what's this look like from a business process? You know, generally a business request will come in, and it will always depend on the different environments. The uh, bottom left point here is zero, zero, right? So if you think of the point zero, zero, it's right there. And if you think of the point 20, 20, well, it's 20 to the right and 20 up, right? This is every chart you've ever seen in the world. That correspond to everybody, okay? 80 by 80, well, that's right there. Well, uh, to make life interesting, uh, SVG doesn't draw things that way. SVG doesn't have the base point here at the bottom left, it has it at the top left, like it were Microsoft Word, or maybe more accurately, like it were a web page, okay? So if you have the point 2020, you would expect it to land right there, where it's actually going to land is right about there. So what you end up having to do is all of your Y coordinates, you have to flip them. It's actually pretty easy, very interesting. Polyline against the polygon. It goes from that point to that point to that point to that point, and it's great. Uh, hey, Brian, why didn't you pick yellow? You could pick yellow. Your decision makers might want that. I would recommend, uh, from a visualization point of view, that all of your actions are either based on being above or below your range of acceptable behavior. You're not going to call a store and tell them things are fine. Uh, you're going to call them and say, hey, you're below what your sale should be. We need to change something. Can I help you? Or you're above what your sales should be. What are you doing so I can replicate it elsewhere? So we want to draw the eye towards the good and the bad. The just okay, we want to ignore. That's why it's great. Hello. So I'd like you to look at everyone around, find somebody in a blue shirt, smile at them, and say thank you. The volunteers made this rock. Thank you, volunteers. It worked well, no, we it flowed well, it worked pretty decently for all so, of us. What about the facility? Do you like the building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. rooms worked okay, traffic flow, everything was working good for you? Perfect. All right, excellent. Let that show up in your valves. Give me a bit of valve as well. Let us know. Give us your feedback. And, you know, we try to improve every year, so we use your feedback to do that. On your way out the doors, there's going to be a couple people with lanyards in their arms as a reminder to you to recycle them by leaving them with those people, unless you really want it. And if you really want it and you're going to use it, please be our guest. It's there to advertise and remind you about the Oregon SQL user group. <laughs> Knock it out of the park, Jeff. Thank you. And your crew. <laughs> Let's give some things away. So, who in the audience are Laker fans? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's give away SQL Monitor. SQL Monitor, if you haven't used it, is a phenomenal tool. It's got a retail value of 99 cents at least. <laughs> what, what, is the, what is the price of retail price of Monitor? So it's actually uh, $14.95, but... Uh, $14.95! <laughs> I want two of them! <laughs> and it goes to um, Alberto Sensabala. Oh! Alberto 
So the first prize from Quest is a wonderful package. And somebody pick it up and hold it up and flag it, flag it around. Of Stumptown Coffee. If you're a, a typical Northwesterner, you're addicted to coffee. We have to be. Look at the outside. It's great. <laughs> so Stumptown's decent coffee. And the winner for that is Brian Barnes. All right. So Quest is also going to give us a $100 Amex gift card, and that goes to Grace Lighty. That's me. So, Cozy Rod, also one of our Wayne Duke. Duck. There's Wayne. Uh -huh. And we're going to draw for that, her. The winner is Bob Hall. Hey, Bob Hall. Every winner has been present so far. That's pretty cool. Oh, is this being recorded? It is, yes. <laughs> so check with this lady over here and she she got your prize down here. Oh I get to take it with you. And you get to take it home with you. Thank you. So the next option, the next person who gets this, and I'm going to slaughter the name, my apologies, Prosinger? Yeah. Prosinger yeah. Singer. Singer. Uh, <laughs> really? Dave Dubarney. Really? Yeah! yeah. Really? <laughs> you know, hold on. You, know you, can, you can send the email to Brian O'Donnell and get it directly. All right, we're going to pull somebody else. <laughs> that, was, that was not good. It's good, but Dave has yeah. another kind of option. What kind of back scratching organization are you running? A good one. <laughs> a very good one. We, do, we have happy people. Well, Dave told me earlier today that he's never won a raffle. You won a raffle! <laughs> now you don't get anything, but you won. <laughs> the real winner is Ashwini Tumala. Oh. All right. Camera built into it? Yeah. Video and? Video and? Oh, cool. Your neighbors are really going to love you. <laughs> the winner of this one is Queen Ron Yee. From Century One, we have another drum, the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have... Pack of Sequel Century and DBA Express, or BI Century, and uh, the BI Express bundle. Basically software licenses for a lot of money. At least 99 cents. <laughs> a buck 50, come on. 50 cents? Rafal Zambrano. Hey! Uh, we have a winner! All right. Rafael Zambrano with the Millennium Drone. Thank you. Now we have a really, really cool gift from Interject. A USB monitor. Yeah. Somebody's going to monitor the USBs you have. <laughs> what does a USB monitor mean? Just a nice little small like a, monitor. Like a, tele, like a computer monitor. Yeah. Okay. So the winner is? The winner is? Let's see. Uh, yes. Comma? Simon? Am I pretty the camera? All right. So Joe is going to come and make a drawing, give it away, make somebody very happy, take it with their children. If the children never get a chance to use it. I know more than one family that have multiple Xboxes because that's the only way the kids got a chance. Leon Orlo, where are you? There you go. Leon, welcome, Leon. So, thank you for coming, folks. 
We appreciate your attendance, and we hope that you'll come again next year. We're tentatively scheduled for November 2 next year. All right? Thank you.